Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a brand new Sinister playthrough, this time of Telepath RPG, Servants of God. Now, uh, I should probably come right out and say, before we get started here, this is technically my game. It might be a little unorthodox for me to be doing a playthrough of my own game, but you know what? There aren't any playthroughs of it right now, and that's kind of irritating. I want to see a playthrough of my game, and if that means I have to make it myself, well then, by God, that is what I'll do. In fact, that's what led me to make this game in the first place, is there weren't games like this, and I wanted to see those, so I made it. And now I want to see a playthrough of it, so I'm going to make that too. That's just the kind of guy I am. So, let's get started. Uh, I will name myself... Oh, does it really matter? I guess I will name myself... Uh... Toin. Toin. There we go. My name will be Toin. Why? Why not? Okay, so as you can see, there are four basic types of characters. You can be a defender, someone who specializes in psychic defense. You can be a manipulator, someone who specializes in, as you may have guessed, psychic manipulation. You can be a statesman, which basically means you're really good at persuading people, and you also have really good leadership skills. You can have a much larger force than someone who is, say, not a statesman. And the warrior, which basically just means you can kick everyone's butt in combat. My personal preference when I play is generally to be a manipulator or a statesman, but that just generally conforms to my preferred playstyle with most RPGs. I've never been the sort to run around just massacring everyone. And I tend to enjoy sort of manipulative, persuasive type stuff. I'm going to go with the Statesman. However, fair warning, I do not intend to actually uh, go through all of the dialogue in this game. There is a lot of it, and I don't want this to be a super boring playthrough, so we're going to be skipping a fair bit, particularly where there are no real choices to be made. Um, there is a lot of branching dialogue in this game, but some of it is just for background, and we will be skipping all of that. I strongly recommend you play this game, by the way, and I strongly recommend that you actually read and listen to the dialogue when you get to these points, but for purposes of having a watchable video, we will be skipping that stuff. So this scene here is where your character first becomes acquainted with the uh, highly, highly uh, conservative religious zealots who have taken root in his home city of Ravenal. We'll just be skipping this because we'll be having. I we was will young have, uh, when they first showed up in Ravenal, probably no older than thirteen. Mother and father were as blind as anyone. We were all blind. It was right in front of us, and we could not see. Not until they came for us. So, I'm going to skip that, too. We have plenty of time to become acquainted with the cult. Um, quick background. We've just been thrown in prison. That sucks. But luckily, our friend Griffin has... I just knew I'd find you in here. ...busted us out of jail. I'm going to skip through all this dialogue, too. When I heard that they'd arrested... Yep. Okay, cool. So, now we go to the first battle. It's part of the prison escape. As you can see in... At the beginning of every battle, you have the chance to manage your team. Right now, it's just Toyn and Griffin. Uh, however, we will be getting other people. You have the ability to switch your character's attacks. Right now, we only have two, but that will change. And we don't have any orbs yet, but we can manage those too once we start getting them. So here's how it works. You move space by space using WASD or the arrow keys. You hit spacebar to end your turn. Walk up to enemies. You can use uh, the attack buttons up here to attack, or you can just use a hotkey, as I just did right there. I just double tapped the one key and that selected and used his first attack. And that is the end of our first enemy and the end of our first battle. Isn't that exciting, folks? As you can tell, this is a training mission. Uh, this is not... Hey, are you alright? It's not super difficult stuff. I'm just gonna skip this also. Um, 
I swear, this is great dialogue. Like, you shouldn't be skipping this the way I'm doing it. I'm just doing that in the interest of making this an entertaining thing to sit and watch. Griffin, you're back. Did you so, find Senators Duvalier? No, unfortunately. Okay, I'm going to skip this all day. Uh, quick background. Um, Griffin is your best friend from childhood. And Rahel, you're just now meeting. She and Griffin are members of a resistance that is trying to overthrow the theocratic cult that has overthrown the government and which is responsible for you being in prison at this particular moment in time. We are about to meet the other members of the resistance. Those who are still alive, anyway. Set, Armand, did you find Boz? Yes, we did. He's a little thin, but otherwise he's just fine. So Set, the rotund fellow over there in the top right, that is your healer. Armand is an assassin. We will get to see all of these guys in battle in just a second. I hate to skip over all that great voice acting. I'm really proud of the job that all of my actors did, but we'll have plenty of time to listen to that later. For now, I want to get to the juicy stuff. And by juicy stuff, I mean the gameplay type juicy stuff. And I don't mean to say that the dialogue is not part of the gameplay, but as I was saying before, this particular part of the game, uh, there isn't really much interactivity with the dialogue. It's mostly there for the sake of setting the stage. The dialogue becomes much more interactive in a short while. There will be proper dialogue trees, consequences for things you say, and all of that good stuff. Just not during this section. So as you can see, Griffin counterattacks when he's hit from the front. That's his special thing as a fighter. And as you can see, um, this particular group of enemies is going after Toyn. The enemies will tend to do that if you move your hero around to a certain corner of the battlefield and enemies are not in range of any of your other characters, they will pursue your hero. So by moving Toyn over here, I have effectively broken the enemy force in two. It's kind of a handy tip to keep in mind if you are ever in a bad situation. So, as you can see, I have the uh, mouse cursor over this bandit bowman in the top right. He has 14 health. I'm clicking arm on, I'm going to send him around. When you attack enemies from behind in this game, you get a backstab damage bonus. That was enough to bring this bowman down to a single hit point. Rahel will be able to take him out handily with a bow 2 shot. And that puts us in good stead for finishing off these two enemies here. As you can see, that enemy there is only one hit point, so that's the end of him. With a sword swipe from Griffin. And Set, why don't you just kind of hang out over here and stay safe for another turn. Now, you might be wondering why I'm leaving Toyn here. The answer is, no matter how far down this guy moves, he's not going to be able to shoot Toyn because Bo does not hit the space in front of you. It only hits one space away. So even if he moves all the way down here, he still won't be able to hit Toyn. At best, he'll be able to hit the space behind Toyn. He would have to actually move all the way down here before he'd be able to get off a shot, and that will take him a solid two turns. And frankly, I'm not too worried about that. I'm just going to leave Toyn there for the time being. Let's see, this guy has eight hit points. Actually, I don't even need to use Griffin. I can just have Armon backstab him. And that is the end of him. Rahel, why don't you move up there? Set, why don't you heal Griffin? As you can see, Mind Shield is a healing spell on this game. Um, that's sort of the unconventional fiction of the world in which this takes place. There is no magic in Telepath RPG. It is, as you might imagine, telepathic, right? This is a world of psionics and psychics. And. You don't automatically heal people, right? You instead sort of uh, protect them with a psychokinetic bubble, which wards off damage, both mental and physical, and generally speaking, just kind of leaves the enemy unable to finish you off. It preserves you as you remain on the battlefield. That is the idea behind mind shields. So as you can see, Toyn is down to five hit points, but we have set right here 
to heal him with Mind Shield. And Twine is as good as new. Back to full 14 hit points. And here's Armand with his second stab of the battle, and that is the end of that bandit. Well done, team. 60 gold coins are ours, along with victory. And here we are at the first boss battle of the game. This is a very simple battle. We're almost there. See? Who can you count on? Armon, that's who. Yep, good job, Armon. And we'll just skip over this other dialogue, and we are at the boss battle. This battle can be a little tricky if you're not familiar with how to play this game, but... For obvious reasons, I am very familiar with how to play this game, and this battle is a cinch for me. Maybe not for you, but after you see me how I handle it, maybe you'll think it's easier. Who knows? Alright, so first things first, these guys only have bow level 1. As you can see, if you look in the little attack boxes up there, you'll see they just have a regular bow. Rahel, on the other hand, has bow 1 and bow 2. Bow 2 hits further than Bow 1. She can hit these guys, they cannot hit her. You can shoot over these destructible barrels. I would recommend doing that, given the opportunity. It's a good idea. Um, Set, why don't you hang out over there? Alright. So I'm just going to minimize this a little bit. Okay. So first things first, we want this guy to move down and attack Griffin, which he will do with pretty much no prompting, because Griffin is in attack range. This guy, on the other hand, will just kind of keep plodding along, because he has no one in attack range. That is good for us. We want to make sure that these two guards don't reach our forces at the exact same time, because if they do, that will be twice as many guardsmen for us to deal with at once, and that's bad. We don't want to deal with that many guardsmen at once. Oh, and that guardsman is actually confused. I'm pretty proud of the job I did on the AI in this game, but uh, there are some snafus. The pathfinding is not always super. This guy was not sure how to get to Toyn from where he was, so he just moved up. Not too impressive. I apologize for that, folks. Oh, all right, There we go, and the GUI is back up to full size. Let's see here, so this swordsman is at 24, this guy's at 12. Let's try to take care... Alright, here's my plan. This guy can only move down to here, because he can only move three spaces a turn, as you can see by looking at that foot up in the top left. So Rahel it will be perfectly safe if I stick her right here and have her shoot over these barrels at the guardsman. That should bring him to 17, yes. So, let's see. Next up, we will have Toyn come over here and level a mind blast at this guy, bringing him to 9. Armand, you've got a stab you can use. Why don't you use it? And that is the end of that guardsman. Very nice. And now, Griffin, why don't you just uh, go ahead and slash this bowman. It won't kill him, but doesn't have to. And set. I'll just leave you up there. Okay. Very nice. So we're in pretty good shape here, folks. Um, Toyn just got a little hurt by that, but nothing to be too concerned about. Nothing set can't easily fix. And that will be the end of that bowman. Rahel, why don't you move around this side? Backstab with a shot from your bow. And Armon, I don't think he can get all the way around in time. Oh, he is just one space short. That is sad, folks. Well, we will just have Armon rest. Fun fact, as you can see, he has five out of ten side points going on up there in the top left. That's what that little blue orb is. It represents Psy points. That's what the, uh, the cost refers to. Whenever you use an ability, it deducts that cost in Psy points. If you don't have enough Psy points, you cannot use the ability. If you rest without moving, without attacking, you will regain three Psy points that turn. So I'm going to have Armon rest. Meanwhile, Set, why don't you come up here and heal Griffin? Good job. And now the enemy goes. He's going for Rahel. Totally expected. The enemy, as a general rule, goes for the weakest characters it can hit. Um, there are exceptions. It will oftentimes prioritize your healer. So, set. And it will oftentimes prioritize your hero, if it gets the opportunity. So, you know, Toyin. Um, 
but by and large, all other things being equal, it will prioritize hitting your weaker characters, and it will prioritize backstabbing characters if it gets the opportunity, and above all, it will prioritize killing characters who are on the verge of death. So if you have a character who is about to die, the game will go for it very aggressively and try to kill it. Of course, that swordsman is not going to have the opportunity because we have finished him off long before he got the chance to do anything untoward to Rahel. Now, fun fact, you can finish this battle without ever actually engaging the boss. You can just sit here, doing absolutely nothing, and wait for Rahel to slowly pick him off from behind the barrels. But that's boring. We don't want to do that, do we? The answer is no, we do not want to do that. We want to do something much more interesting, so I will move Armand up here. Griffin, why don't you come over here? Rahel, why don't you attack him? And now we wait. One thing you do not ever want to do with this boss is attack him from the front. As you can see, he deals a whopping 12 damage, and if you attack him from the front, he will make like Griffin and he will counterattack. And he will counterattack hard, dealing a solid 12 damage. And then, of course, he'll get to go, and he will have a normal attack for 12 damage, and that will probably be the end of your character, whatever it is that he's attacking. So, my strong suggestion is do not attack him from the front if you have someone directly in front of him. Of course, he died there, and that is the end of that. 100 gold coins for us, and victory! I don't know about you, but I feel pretty good about that. And now, here we are in headquarters. We've finally escaped from prison, and it's time to talk to Griffin and see what we need to do next. Hey, what's up? What is our next move, Griffin? Well, first things first. We need a new hideout. We were staying in the warehouse of a local merchant named Fife, but he started to become paranoid that the cult would find us there and imprison him. Baz is willing to let us stay here, but he wants to talk to you first. Who, me? The one and only. Baz is in the back. Just go ahead and talk to him. Okay, will do. And folks, that concludes the introduction to Telepath RPG Servants of God. As we talk to Boz in the very next episode, we will be getting the very first proper mission in the entire game. Incidentally, you don't have to actually talk to him. You don't actually have to go on the first mission. You can actually go ahead and just start exploring Ravenal, doing side quests, doing whatever you want. That is the whole premise behind this game. It's like Shining Force, except not linear. It's modeled actually after WRPGs like Fallout, in that you can just kind of go anywhere and do whatever the heck you want. It just happens to have those juicy Shining Force-style tactical battles as a way of resolving combat. So that is all we have time for now. I hope you enjoyed watching this very quick introduction to the game. We will be playing more shortly. Thanks for watching.